This week is uh, Encore Crawford, Chief Executive Vice President and Portfolio Manager at Alger, joins me here. Good to see you. Good to see you, too, Mike. Um, so we, we often talk about these stocks as one big blob, <laughs> the Magnificent Seven or Fang or whatever it is, uh, as if there's similar kind of energy sources driving them, as if the same things matter to all of them. Not always the case. So as we sift among the ones reporting this week, what matters? I think... What matters is different for every single one of them, in part because the end markets and the operating expense discipline is all different for each one of them. So for Microsoft, what's going to matter is, you know, do they see stabilization in Azure or their cloud business? How do they think about or how are they guiding us to how AI will ramp with the introduction of Copilot in Q4 and then 2024? Um, for, for Meta, it's going to be all about OpEx. Yeah. They've, they seem to have a great revenue. Um, we expect a revenue beat and probably a raise. Um, but what are they going to say about their OpEx? Do they go back to their their ways of, you know, pre-COVID where they spend willy-nilly or do they maintain the discipline? Mm -hmm. um, for Google, a little bit different. Google, it feels like, you know, what is a product cycle? We're looking to see if they say anything about AI that can help us bridge the gap in a more uncertain economic environment for a product cycle. So I think it's different for sure. each one. And so you may actually see a bifurcation in the reactions of each one of them. When it comes to, um, to Microsoft, there's the, you know, obviously in, in the Azure business, that's a matter of is demand settling out and margins, you know, going to be stable for a while. But in terms of what they're doing with AI, with Copilot, so there's the, you know, we're going to sell X number of subscriptions, you know, seats or whatever. But also, it's how are you running your business differently, presumably, with your own business with all these tools? Yeah, so it's funny because I think the software companies are not only the enablers of this entire AI revolution that we are embarking on, but they also are eating their own cooking. Mm -hmm. So to some extent, they are um, increasing internal productivity. They're seeing how much productivity is increasing, and then they're selling it. So they actually get a benefit from, from both sides, whereas the rest of the market will benefit from the productivity increase. Some of these software companies will see a massive increase in pricing power, in part because they're enabling that productivity increase. Yeah. Um, I guess there's not a real handy way for investors to say, we're just going to play that trend. So therefore, they go to the providers, right? Uh, but do you think that as people look at other businesses, uh, as those companies adopt, you know, whatever these productivity enhancing tools are, that it actually is making its way into earnings models and things like that? I think that is going to be slow relative to, you know, how we, we want it to, to yeah. establish itself. And in part because these changes take time. However, it takes time relative to the business model that we have on Excel. Um, in the grand scheme of things, I think by the end of the decade, we will probably see 40% penetration of gen AI or AI type products into mass market. Every single company will have to adopt this. It's, it's a structural imperative mm -hmm. at this point versus it being a choice. You mentioned for Alphabet, you know, one of the questions is what are they going to be able to tell us in terms of their position here and, and whether they're going to get payback on some of their investments. But as a business right now, I mean, it seems like, you know, they had a little scare. The street thought that they were going to be kind of a victim of the AI movement. And now it's back up toward its highs. It seems like it's kind of a consensus uh, hold again. Yeah, and, and oftentimes I think, you know, consensus is consensus. Yeah, right. And oftentimes what you have to do is look beyond this quarter. So they're going to be reporting in 30 minutes. Um, and we're kind of looking forward six months and saying, you know, the, the economy is a little bit unstable. Um, the 10-year is over 5% or close to 5%. Um, the consumer is looking a little shakier than it has historically over the last few years. Mm -hmm. So the end market is advertising, yeah. which is driven by the consumer and the economy. And because Google, unlike the other Magnificent Seven, they don't have a product cycle that bridges them through this uncertain environment, it becomes a little bit, um, I don't know, a little bit more difficult to own mm -hmm. um, relative to the other two that do have their product cycles. And I'm looking over six months. I don't know what happens tonight. Sure. Uh so does that imply something like a meta? I mean, all this focus on the operating expenses, that's because people just pay, take for granted that, you know, that advertising engine keeps spinning? 
Well, it's not only the advertising engine that Meta has, it's the product cycles underlying their core advertising engines with Reels, with Direct to Connect, with the AI platform that, um, that they've just recently introduced and the monetization of all of these, mm -hmm. um, that is going to drive the top line.